A big story today then, Turkish opposition MP Erin Erdem is being investigated for treason after an interview he gave to RT. He told our channel that Islamic State in Syria allegedly received material to make deadly sarin gas via Turkey. The MP said an inquiry was opened into the incident but then was abruptly closed. <laughs> Chemical weapon materials were brought to Turkey and put together in ISIL camps in Syria, which was known as the Iraqi Al-Qaeda at the time. We have recordings to confirm this. A public prosecutor opened an investigation, which led to those involved being detained. A week later, another public prosecutor was assigned, and all the detainees were released. They left Turkey, crossing the Syrian border. The phone recordings in the indictment showed all the details of how the shipment was going to be made, from how it was prepared, to the content, the labs and the source of the materials, which trucks were going to be used, all dates, etc. From A to Z, everything was discussed and recorded. Despite all of this evidence, the suspects were released. RT wasn't the only channel to pick up on the story. Aram Erdem had previously spoken to other media outlets on the issue too. It even presented his evidence to the Turkish parliament. A prosecutor said that some people in Turkey have contacts with the terrorist organization ISIL, supply and transport the key ingredient of sarin. But it was after our broadcast that the story started spreading and the criminal investigation now it seems has kicked in. Artisla Petrenka joins me now to see where this could be heading. Hi, Ilya. Um, we're going to explain to our viewers a little bit about the background of the case in just a minute. But first of all, is this guy going to be prosecuted? Well, Aaron Erdem refused to show us the evidence of uh, what he had collected, feeling that this would amount to revealing state secrets mm. and be considered treason. And that is exactly well, it seems what... seems come to pass, isn't it? Exactly. That's uh, what he is being investigated for right now. Now, uh, Aaron Erdem is an opposition member of parliament for uh, the Republican People's Party. And in order for the crim criminal proceedings to uh, carry on, uh, he needs to uh, be stripped of his parliament parliamentary immunity. Uh, well, uh, Aaron Erdem defended himself by saying that he's been subject to a smear campaign over uh, the accusations that he did present in the parliament. And he also said that he's been receiving death threats on uh, social media. It's worth mentioning that he didn't accuse the Turkish government directly. He only said that the alleged uh, transferring of uh, those uh, sarin gas ingredients, uh, they were done uh, through the Turkish border and it was done on Turkish territory. Yes, quite what happened was uh, the, the people were investigated for that apparently and some people were arrested but he said that the case was dropped and uh, the people under arrest were very quickly released so that's what his concerns were. We mm. have been trying to contact uh, the man for the past several hours to get uh, some uh, new comments from him however we weren't able to do so. All right. Uh, let's just remind our viewers, it's quite a complicated story here and some connections may or may not be made. That's, that, that's the whole thing about it, isn't it? We'll come straight back to you. Um, this all winds back to uh, what he told RT about uh, what potentially happened in 2013. In August that year, a sarin attack on a Damascus suburb killed scores of civilians. The attack uh, was pinned on the Syrian government with Turkey pointing uh, the finger firmly at Assad. Let's remind ourselves of that. Here it comes. An awful pictures coming back from there. Well, Erem Erdem believes the materials involved in that deadly chemical attack near Damascus could have been smuggled, as Ili was saying, from Turkey. There's a high probability that it was carried out with materials shipped through Turkey. It was claimed regime forces were behind it. But in my opinion, examining the dates and the indictment, the Syrian government didn't have sarin gas. It was the attackers who possessed it. As far as I understand, this case was closed just to place guilt on the Syrian government. 
The shipment is through Turkey, but all basic materials were purchased in Europe. Western sources know very well who carried out the sarin gas attack in Syria. They know that these people are working for al-Qaeda. The West has been hypocritical over the whole situation. A few months before the sarin attack near the Syrian capital, there were reports of Turkish authorities arresting members of an al-Qaeda-linked group in possession of sarin. Now, when Moscow followed up on the allegations, Ankara dismissed them, saying the seized agent was simply antifreeze. Ilya, back to you again. You've recently just come back from uh, Istanbul, from Turkey yourself. You're covering the story of those Jumhuriyet uh, journalists as well that have been arrested. Um, it's not a good time to be a journalist there at the moment, but it looks like it. We'll talk about that in a bit more detail at the moment. But tell us more about the background of this story and this whole, these connections being made about the sarin gas and about uh, weapons potentially being smuggled into Syria. Well, first of all, uh, let's just check out a video uh, that explains what happened to these two senior journalists from Jumhuriyet. Mm. On bu haberi özel haber olarak yapan kişi de böyle zannediyorum ki bunun bedelini ağır ödeyecek. Yeah, well, uh, you know, the uh, information spelled out there graphically. It's, it's a tough time to be a journalist in Turkey right now, isn't it? Well, absolutely. And I went to, to the office of that Jumhuriyet newspaper that released the video. And the people are on the edge. Barely anyone wants to speak on camera, fearing they could be next in line after their editor-in-chief. And uh, uh, you mean, I, I, I just, I can tell you that some people start speaking on camera, but one lady, she just burst into tears saying that she doesn't want to be a part of this. Then we record another one, another journalist from uh, Jumhuriyet. Mm -hmm. uh, she made it into the piece, but then she asked uh, uh, herself to be edited out of the piece. Uh, now, I've had an opportunity to talk to some other news organizations that are not only willing to expose government flaws, but also look into those murky allegations of uh, government connections with terrorist organizations. But it appears uh, to be that uh, doing uh, the job for the journalists from these news outlets automatically means putting themselves, putting their lives in jeopardy. In Turkey, we as journalists can no longer investigate. People spread rumors, but we are not free to verify them. So uh, trying to throw uh, people in jail on accusations of treason and espionage seems to be uh, becoming a common tactic. And this is really this is what... the country so keen still to join uh, Europe. That's absolutely right. But it appears to be that the main targets here are journalists and opposition politicians. And they really got to watch out for what they're saying right now. Seems so. Ilya, thanks for the update there. Appreciate it. We know you've had first time of experience of it just coming back from there. All right, thank you. Um, I spoke to Turkish opposition MP Hisha Odsoy earlier. He told me the investigation into Erin Erdem's comments is part of a bigger government witch hunt that's been going on for years. It is really very much up to the uh, ruling party, as they have the majority, I mean, in the parliament. They may not do it, but they may use this as a means of putting pressure on oppositional voices. And now there is a a lynching campaign against uh, this deputy. Whenever people criticize the Turkish government's foreign policy, they are accused of being traitors. I mean, there is huge censorship, it's kind of a psychological warfare on anybody who is critical of the government's uh, foreign policy. It's kind of witch hunting. Well, we can tell you, meantime, a hashtag in support of the MP has been launched on Turkish Twitter. It translates as Erem Erdem is not alone. We'll, of course, continue to closely follow this story here on RT, across all our platforms, and bring the latest developments as and when they happen. Tomorrow's going to be a crunch day as well, by the looks of it for him.